now let's look at a opposite situation. Still, we are talking about uh, solidification of a pure element solid. But the, then we, the solid, in this case, is grows into a super cooled liquid, meaning the liquid temperature is actually lower than the solid temperature, or undercooled liquid, meaning the solid temperature is actually higher than the liquid temperature. So again, this is a schematic illustrates the temperature profile on both the left side and right side, in the solid on the left and in the liquid on the right. And within the liquid, you see we have a temperature gradient, but overall the liquid temperature would be compared with left side solid temperature is lower. That's what we mean by super cooled liquid. And of course, same as before, at right at the interface between solid and liquid, the temperature is at uh, TM or melting temperature, equilibrium melting temperature. Okay? And the, this, this scenario would occur when at the beginning stage of solidification into a super cooled liquid. We say supercooled liquid means the liquid exists, uh, the material exists in liquid state even below its equilibrium melting temperature. Okay? Of course, it's not very stable, but at least at the beginning stage, we may observe something like this. So now let's consider the balance of heat flow again. All the terms remain the same, and we plot left side solid, right side liquid, same as here. And in this case, because the liquid is super cooled, which means liquid temperature is lower, so the heat flow would be from high temperature in the solid on the left into the low temperature in the solid on the right, like this, from solid to liquid, because solid in this case would be hotter than liquid. Okay, that's a heat flow. And since we are still consider solidification or growth of solid, an interface moves from the solid into the liquid. The velocity of the interface is still pointing towards the right side, right side. And uh, in this case, to consider the thermal or heat balance, we write the heat balance equation something like this. Okay? This time it's somewhat different because the right side, the liquid side is colder. The kappa L, thermal conductivity within the liquid, times T prime L, the temperature gradient within the liquid, gives us how much of the heat flow into the deeper of the liquid, into the colder zone. That amount of heat extraction should be balanced by how much of the heat flows through the solid kappa s times T prime s, thermal conductivity of solid times temperature gradient within the solid plus uh, plus what? Plus when the liquid turns into the solid, it also releases the heat, similar release the heat. But this heat, instead of conducting into the solid, is conducting into the uh, liquid phase, or extracted away from the liquid phase. So now this is the balance of heat equation under this situation. Now let's consider the shape of the solid-liquid interface, the shape of the solid-liquid interface. Again, let's consider if there is a moment when we have a solid protrusion, this bump into the liquid, solid protrusion of the, uh, into the liquid. And the heat flow is from high temperature on the left in the solid into the low temperature on the right into the liquid. This is still our heat flow direction. Okay? The velocity of the interface is the same. We make the same assumption deep within the solid there's no temperature change. Deep within the liquid, there's also no temperature change. And right at the solid-liquid interface, the temperature is determined by the equilibrium melting temperature. So on the left side, within the solid, the distance is getting larger, while the delta T is the same, which means 
the temperature gradient within the solid is getting smaller. At the same time, for this local protrusion region, region. at the same time, within the liquid, the, get, the distance gets smaller for this protrusion, while the delta T remains the same. So delta T over delta X, delta X gets smaller, the temperature gradient on the right side within liquid gets larger. So now go back to this equation, the right side delta uh, sorry, T prime L, the temperature gradient for the liquid phase gets larger, while one term, the kappa S, T prime S, get smaller. The only way for this equation to keep uh, the balance is for the velocity to go higher. The protrusion would grow faster as the solidification happens, as the protrusion develops deeper into the liquid. Okay, in this case, what if that's a protrusion, and that protrusion will grow even faster uh, comparing with the surrounding flat region. That means the planar solid liquid interface would not be stable or would be unstable, and the protrusion tends to grow even faster and go quicker and even faster. And under such a condition, we would form so-called dendrite or branch-like structure. Dendrite or branch-like structure, which is not flat interface. And for this tip growth, uh, would increase as the tip radius decrease. The sharper the tip, the faster this grows because the difference in the temperature gradient temperature gradient is the same okay and then the growth rate would approach zero the growth rate would approach zero under certain condition one is when the then dried the local tip radius Go, grows towards infinity, which means it's flat, then of course it's not any, um, that gradient is not any larger compared with the surrounding region, then it's not growing any faster. That's one possibility. The other possibility is the local tip becomes too sharp. When the local tip becomes too sharp, then As it is getting closer to the critical radius, then if it's smaller than the critical radius, based on what we learned with critical nucleation, the local solid would have a tendency to dissolve into the liquid. At that moment, the dendrite growth would also stop. Okay? So this is the other situation of growth of solid pure element into liquid, but in this case, the liquid temperature is lower than the solid temperature, or the so-called supercooled liquid. Not an equilibrium growth, but in this case, the dendrite would appear and would grow faster and faster until it becomes too sharp that it risks being dissolved away. Okay. So finally, let me show some image of actual dendrites people observed for pure element during solidification. The, this schematic shows the simulated computer simulation of nickel dendrite during solidification. You have primary branch, secondary branch, and a ternary branch. It's quite interesting. It doesn't remain flat. If the liquid is undercooled, it will grow along one direction and under certain locations, secondary branch grow and ternary branch grow. That's what people simulated. Then in actual experiment, people did observe actual crystal dendrite for pure metal uh, crystal. For example, this zinc dendrite as what we illustrated here, or the beautiful copper dendrites and what was observed in this uh, a photo. Okay, so you see that dendrites do appear in even pure elements when under special condition, the so-called super cooled liquid condition, it may occur. On the other hand, if it's superheated liquid, then we would have planar interface and dendrites will not form.